वेलकम टू द थर्ड लेक्चर ऑन लॉजिकल डिडक्शन इन आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन डिटेल्स व्हाट इज प्रेडिकेट लॉजिक व्हाट इज द सिटैक्स ऑफ प्रेडिकेट लॉजिक एंड व्हाट डू वी मीन बाय डिडक्शन इन्फ्लुएंसिंग इन प्रेडिकेट लॉजिक टुडे वी विल स्टडी वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट टेक्निक्स ऑफ inferencing in first order logic or predicate logic which is the method of resolution refutation which is originally attributed to robinson his uh, seminal work on resolution refutation technique to recapitulate we discussed predicate logic and in predicate logic we talked about things like for all there exist wherever whenever someone no one and things like that and we did these four examples in first order predicate logic and we said that in predicate logic we have variables we have constant symbols we have predicate symbols and we have function symbols and we had two new connectors their exist and for all and we showed how this first example was coded we used a predicate goes xy and we said for all x goes mary x implies goes lamb x the second one we said was goes mary school this was as we said a, an instance which had no variables so it was called a ground instance our goal was goes lamb school and as usual we wanted to prove this is always true and by this always true we wanted to say that this is valid which means it is true under all interpretations then we discussed in a little more details about what is meant by inferencing and we said that first order predicate calculus has a it is also known as predicate calculus instead of predicate logic it has a domain it has some constant symbols it has some variables it has some function symbols and it has some predicate symbols it has the standard connectors and these two additional connectors we define terms using variables and function symbols we define formulae using terms and predicate symbols we discussed what are free variables which are not bound or not in the scope of any for all or there exist connector and we discussed bound variables and then we went to what are what is an interpretation and we said that for every interpretation we define a specific instance of a domain set and then we map the constants the functions and the predicate suitably and we saw this example as before and we looked at one domain where we defined this as akash baby etc and we saw examples where we mapped m to some element in the domain we mapped l to some element in the domain and we mapped s to some element in the domain we defined a function gxy in the domain as defined here and then we could see whether that is true for that interpretation or not and we could get several interpretations for the same domain we could get different domains and our objective to prove that a formula is valid it must be true under all domains that means under all interpretations and a formula is said to be satisfiable if it is true at least under one interpretation as we can see that the number of interpretations is infinite so the number of interpretations is infinite whereas in a pure boolean logic if there are n variables in propositional logic if there are n variables there are 2 to the power n interpretations in the truth table of propositional logic so in propositional logic 
if we use propositional logic then it is finite but here in predicate logic we have infinite number of interpretations so how do we solve the problem in the case where we have infinite number of interpretations we have also discussed in the previous lecture that this problem is undecidable and there are paradoxes so it means that it cannot be fully solved but it is partially solvable in the sense that if a formula is valid there is an algorithm to find it without infinite time without going through all the infinite interpretations so a finite algorithm exists in case it is valid and one of the most famous algorithms for that is the resolution refutation method so we will now discuss the resolution refutation method before going into predicate logic and resolution refutation with predicate logic we will first show the resolution refutation in propositional logic and then extend it to predicate logic so the objective of resolution refutation is we want to prove the validity of a formula f1 and f2 and so and so forth implies goal this is our inferencing formula we will take the negate of that formula the negate of that formula if you simply apply the rules this will become not a or b and if you take the negate on both side you will get this so if f is this formula then not f is this formula and if f is valid then not f is unsatisfiable that means it is false under all interpretations now we don't want to produce the truth table so the resolution refutation steps are threefold threefold first we will convert it into clausal form clausal form is a conjunctive normal form or a product of sums which means that it will be of the form this and this and this and each will be a, each such term which is called a clause will be of of only or terms so it's a it's a product of sums so it is a or it is also called a conjunctive normal form formula so first step is to convert it to a clausal form next step is to use the single resolution rule to create new clauses and the resolution rule says the method says that you go on creating new clauses and if the formula is unsatisfiable you will prove falsity or you will get a contradiction so let us see how it works let us go to our original example and from that let us go to this example if asha is elected vp then rajat is chosen gsec and bharati is chosen treasurer rajat is not chosen as gsec therefore this is our goal asha is not elected vp so we choose a to be asha elected vp we choose b to be rajat chosen as gsec and we chose c to be bharati chosen as treasurer so our first statement is if asha is elected vp then then rajat is chosen gsec and bharati is chosen treasurer so this is our first formula if asha is elected vp then this and this what is b rajat is chosen gsec and c bharati is chosen as treasurer and if we convert it to a product of sums form we apply distribution law this becomes not a or this and this so this formula would become not a or b and c which if you distribute this across this you will get this which is in the form that we want the form is that it is a product of of some terms that means it is an and of some terms and each term is only an or term each such term is called a clause 
So we get two clauses out of this C1 which is not A or B and C2 which is not A or C. And then the second is Rajat is not chosen as G sec which is not B. And Goal is Asha is not elected VP which is G is not A. And as we said we have to find not G. So not G is A. So now each, this one is already in clausal form. This is already in, in the conjunctive normal form and this is already in conjunctive normal form. So from this query we get four clauses. The first is this one, C1. The second is C2. The third is C3, which we get from F2. And the fourth is A, which we get from not G. And the resolution refutation rule says, the first step we have now performed by converting it to clausal form. All we have to do is to prove that not F is false. That means, we have to prove that this set of clauses is false. How do we prove that? We prove that using what is called the resolution rule. What is the resolution rule? So now we discuss the resolution rule. The resolution rule is, let in the simplest case, let C1 be A or B and C2 be not A or C. The resolution rule says if C1 is true and C2 is true, then C3 which is not B, which is B or C is also true. Which means that if A or B is true and not A which is the negator of one of the terms is true, then you can take the other two terms, make an R of it and say this has to be true. We could replace B by some clause C dashed and C by some clause C double dashed and C3 could be C dashed or C double dashed. It is very simple to prove this. All you can do is if you have C1 and C2, we can prove that C1 and C2 implies C3 is a valid formula. Now to prove unsatisfiability, all we need to do is use the resolution rule repeatedly to reach a situation where one clause is A and the other clause is not A. And since the clauses are all ended, since the clauses are all ended, therefore this and this reach, reaches a contradiction or false. So the steps are that we repeatedly apply the resolution rule and if the formula is unsatisfiable, false will be derived. So this is the resolution refutation method and for propositional logic since the method is finite it is terminating and therefore the resolution rule is sound and complete in the sense that if the formula is if it false is to be derived it will be derived. We now move on to applying resolution refutation in the same example and just go through it in little more details. So as mentioned earlier, given two clauses C1 which is A or B, C2 which is not A or C, we derive a new clause B or C. In general, B could be another clause C and small c could be another C dashed and then this would be C or C dashed. We know that this is false and we go on applying this rule. So given this problem which we had, we converted it to clausal form C1 and C2. So this is C1, C1, this is C2, this is C3 and we took the negate of G to get C4. And what do we get? If we use C1 and C3, then we have not B and B, so we get not A. So we get C5 as mentioned here, we get not A. Now once we have not A and A, from these two we can get it to be false. So given F1 and F2 and not G, we have proved 
that f1 and f2 and not g is false which means that this formula is unsatisfiable which means that the original formula f1 and f2 implies g is valid or is always true so this is how the resolution refutation method works let us took, look at another example the example says rajesh either took the bus or came by cycle to class if he came by cycle or walked to class he arrived late rajesh did not arrive late therefore he took the bus to class so what are the first thing is our modeling in propositional logic so first thing is identify the boolean variables the first boolean variable is bus that means he took the bus second is he came by cycle to class the third is he could have walked to class and the fourth is which whether he arrived late or not so these are the four boolean variables what is our first statement our first statement says rajesh either took the bus or came by cycle to class now this either or we could use it as a, a inclusive or or an exclusive or let us say we use an exclusive or so we say he took the bus and not cycle or he took only the cycle and not the bus we could do it this way the other alternative which is not equivalent to this is the inclusive or where we could say he took the bus or cycle which in this case it would mean that he he neither he could have taken either the bus or the cycle or both the bus and the cycle but here he cannot take both the bus and the cycle so let us assume we have taken this one the second one was if he came by cycle or walked he would have arrived late so cycle or walk implies late what is f3 he did not arrive late so not late what is the goal therefore he took the bus so this is our modeling we have now modeled this in first order predicate logic now let us get the clauses so how do we get the clauses we get the clauses from each one of them so this is not in conjunctive normal form because this contains the way we are saying is that this contains bus and not cycle or not bus and cycle now if we distribute it over this we will get bus or cycle and not bus or not cycle we'll get these two because bus and not bus bus and not bus this bus or not bus is true cycle or not cycle is true and if something is true we can simply remove it from a conjunctive form so this is what we get from this one what do we get from this one if we move it out a little we get not a or b so we will get not cycle or walk imp or late so we will if we get not cycle or walk or late so we will get not of cycle or walk or late this is from f1 from f2 we get this and from this all we need to do is distribute this out and if we take the negate of this what do we get 
if we take the negative of this we get not cycle and not walk or late and if we distribute this across then we will get late or not cycle and late or not walk this is now in conjunctive normal form from f3 we get not late and from negate of g we get not bus so what are the clauses that we have got now so we have now done the first step of conversion to clausal form so the first clause that we have c1 is this the second clause that we have c2 is this the third clause that we have c3 is this the fourth clause that we have c4 is this the fifth clause that we have c5 is this and the sixth clause that we have c6 is this now it is not difficult to see how we are going to use our methodology so let us say we take c6 and c1 c6 contains not bus c1 contains bus or cycle from that we will derive a new clause c7 which is cycle now we can use c7 with c5 and if we use c7 with c5 c5 is late or not cycle c7 is cycle so we will use c7 and c5 will give us a new clause c8 which is late now we have late and we have this clause c5 I'm sorry this was uh, this c5 is not late so this was c3 sorry this uh, c7 and c3 c7 c3 is late or not cycle so and c7 was cycle from that we will get c8 is late c5 is not late so now c8 and c5 will give me false So now I have been able to derive false using resolution refutation method which means that the original formula was valid therefore if I took the negate of the goal and found this formula that now gives me unsatisfiability and because it is unsatisfiable the negate of the formula is false therefore we can now prove that the original formula was valid. We did not use truth table, we just use the resolution refutation method continuously. Having seen the resolution refutation method in propositional logic, in predicate logic we have many other things. We know that we have variables, we have predicates, we have functions, we have constants and we have the two additional quantifiers therefore the steps while the steps remain the same the first step is create f dash equal to not f and prove that not f is unsatisfiable and the two major steps are convert to clausal form and apply the resolution rule but given the presence of variables, constants, predicates, functions and the new quantifiers, both the conversion to clausal form, which needs handling of variables and quantifiers and ground instances, 
and application of the resolution rule in the presence of quantifiers and variables, functions and predicates need more handling in more details. So we first look at how to convert a clausal form, how to get clauses in predicate logic. Here are the six steps. Like in the first step of propositional logic, we will remove implications and other Boolean symbols and convert it only having not and an or. Then we will move the negates inwards. And when we move negates across for all and there exists, we are going to have the issue of converting and making sure that they are done correctly. Secondly, we will standardize the variables to make them unambiguous. We know that based on scope rules, the same variables can be reused for different scopes. Then we will use a step called scholemization where we will remove the there exist quantifiers and this there exist quantifier will either be removed by replacing it with a constant symbol or if it is dependent on any other variable it will be replaced by a function symbol. This step is known as scholemization based on the people who have the or the scholem function. Once you have removed the existential quantifiers you drop the universal quantifier, so you have quantifier free formula assuming everything to be universally quantified and then again you apply the distributed law. So we used step 1, 2 and 6 in propositional logic. We will now use all the steps in first order. We now see how we will try and discuss and how we will show the working of the resolution refutation rule in predicate logic in this first simple example that we have had. So our example was as follows. Our example had f1 and f2 implies g. So for that to prove that to be valid we will prove f1 and f2 and not g to be unsatisfiable. So for that we will take f1 and convert it to clausal form. So f1 when converted to clausal form will first we will remove this quantifier this element and get not a not goes merry or this then we will have this clause we will have for all x we will have not goes merry x or goes lamb x. Then we have no other steps to do except step 5 where we remove this quantifier and we get our first clause which is not goes Mary X or goes Lamb X. This is or so it is first clause. From F2 we get our second clause which is goes Mary school and from not of G we get our third clause which is C3 which is not goes lamb school. So we now have three clauses. Once we have now converted it to clausal form we now apply the resolution rule. Now in the resolution rule, when we apply, we now have variables. Unlike, but we now know that in order to apply the resolution rule, we can resolve this C2 with C1. But in order to resolve C2 with C1, we need to substitute the variable x with school. So if we substitute the variable x with school, this goes Mary school and this not goes Mary school these two match and all we get is because x is substituted to school we get c4 which is goes lamb school 
Now C4 and C3 as you can see are negates of each other and therefore from this we get false. So this is just a simple small example by which we can show how we involve, how we get to do the clausal form conversion and the resolution refutation in predicate logic where in the clausal form conversion we still in this example we couldn't did not use existential quantifiers but we will need to use existential quantifiers in other functions and this is the conversion to clausal form was straightforward on the other hand in the resolution rule we needed to do substitution of variables with constants and we will see more critical examples so having seen this example we now move over to a more complicated example. So the conversion to clausal form has got these six steps. So let us look at this example by which we convert to clausal form. That means let us first identify the brackets so that we are able to. So this is this, this. goes here and this for all x this x actually looks at this x as well as this x so i think uh, there is a need to put one more bracket that will enable us to see because this third bracket this x is here this x is here this is here therefore this for all x x has to be satisfied here. So we are uh, have one more variable. So our formula is for all x, for all y, student y implies likes x, y, this part, this for all y implies that there exists a z such that likes z x this x and this converts here and this takes care of this. So in order to do this conversion in order to convert it to clausal form we first convert this to not a or b which means that this gets converted to for all x not for all y this not for all is for this whole student y implies likes x y so this part is this part or there exist z likes zx this gets converted and this sign whereas this sign is for this so this sign this bracket covers this negate sign and this is for this one the next once we have to do is we need to remove this value this not all so in order to remove this which is student y or or likes x y so we have for all x not now this for all y covers these two so this will be for all y and then we will get not student y or likes x y this bracket gets closed here this bracket get closed here or there exists z likes z x now what we have to do is we have to start moving this negate which means that this negate will have to move inwards 
Once this negate moves inwards, this for all will become there exist and all these will start getting modified. So this will now become this. Once this negate moves inside, this will become there exists y. And then this whole thing will get negated. Once this whole thing gets negated, which means that this will now become student y and not likes x y student y and not likes x y or there exists z likes z x this bracket gets closed and this bracket gets closed and this sorry this bracket gets closed this way now we have done up to here and we have so we have moved all our negates inside negates are all inside there is no need to standardize variables but we have two existential quantifiers this one and this one and we notice that in these two existential quantifiers we need to convert remove these by appropriate new functions or constant symbols now in this case this y is dependent on x because for every x there exists y similarly this z is also dependent on this x therefore we will define two new function symbols fx and gx and we will replace y by fx and z by gx so we will get for all x now we will get student fx and not likes x fx or z will be replaced by gx or likes gx x so now we have removed all this so this step of removal of a scolem function is by using this mechanism for us to replace it now you have to do a distribution because this is and or now all you have to do is drop the universal quantifier and then do a distributive law as we have seen before so this is a little intricate because we need to know when and how we are going to remove existential quantifiers and that is something that needs to be discussed in a little more details which we shall try to do next before we do substitution and quantification let us look at removal of these existential quantifiers if we had a case for there exist x for all y p x y then this under scolemization because this x is independent of y we would replace it by a new function just a constant symbol p a y for all y p a y which would again get converted to p a y and it would mean that this is universally quantified on the other hand if it is a for all x there exists y p x y it means that this y is dependent on this x so this gets converted to for all x p of some new function x f x which in turn gets converted to p of x of x 
So this is how we apply this columnization rule. So this is called the scolem function. Now once we have converted to clause form, as we said see, we now want to apply our resolution rule. Let us see us having these four clauses C1, C2, C3 and C4. Now we can see C1 and C2 can be unified. C1 and C2. In order to unify C1 and C2, in C1 we could replace x by madan and y by z and we will get a new clause which will be passes madan z. We could also replace z by physics and we could unify C1 and C2 and get passes Madan physics. Out of these two, this one, let us say, let us call it C, C dash and let us call this C double dash. C dash is more general than C double dash which means that C dashed is more general because the number of cases that C dashed can cover is much more than what C double dashed can cover. So our objective is to find a more general clause and in general we want to find between two clauses what is the most general derived unified clause that we can so if we so let us look at c1 and c4 given c1 and c4 we could replace w by chetan or madan and we could replace we need to replace the y by mechanics on the other hand the more general qual of c1 and c4 the more general one would replace w y by mechanics and once we replace y by mechanics we will derive and we will get passes and not passes here so we will derive not studies x mechanics and now if we have this as our c triple dashed then this not studies x mechanics so c2 and c triple dash by a substitution of x as madan and z as mechanics would give us false will will these two unify no because this does not unify if i try to replace though both are in the same so this is how i get, get this so in the repeated application we must ensure that we unify by the most general unifier and once we use the most general unifier it will be easy for us to use less number of steps for us to derive the null clause or the false clause if the same exists. Now we have seen one example. Let us try and solve two other examples that we had done before. The contractors and the engineers and the dependable example and the Ayesha and the dancer example. So this is our example. We had for all x, contractor x implies not dependable x. And then we had there exist x, engineer x and contractor x. That means some engineers are contractors. And we want to prove that there exists some engineer who is not dependable. In order to simplify ourselves, let us use contractor x as cx 
dependable x as dx and engineer x as dx. So if we convert f1 to clausal form, what do we get? We get for all x, not contracted x or not dependable x. So we get for all x, not cx or not dx. And if we remove this for all, then we get this as c1. From f2, what do we get? We get there exists x engineer x and contractor x. And because of this there exists, we will now have to use the scolem function. So we will use the scolem function and we will replace this by a constant and we will get ex and ea and ca because x is not dependent on anybody. Therefore, we get two new clauses c2 and c3. From not of g, if we do not of g, then if we do not of g, then what do we get? We get not there exists x, engineer x and not dependable x. If we take the negate inside as per our rule, we get for all x, not of ex or dx. And we remove the for all as per our rule and we get this as c4. Now we can start using our method of resolution refutation. And the simplest way in which we can start doing resolution refutation, we can take c2 and c4 and we replace x by a and we will get dA. Then this new clause C5, which is dA, we take with, we replace A and with C1, we replace this and we get not CA. We get C6. Now C6 and C3 will give us false. So this is the steps. We convert f1, f2 and not g into clausal form and then use the resolution refutation rule. Let us go to the Ayesha and the dancer example. We have f1, f2, f3 and f4 and g. So for f1, what do we do? f1 is like before. We get no, for all x, not dancer x or graceful x. And we can remove this and this becomes c1. From f2 we get student Aisha, this becomes c2. From f3 we get dancer Aisha, which becomes c3 and not of g again becomes not of there exist x student x and graceful x which becomes for all x not student x or not graceful x which becomes c4 given all these now we start our resolution refutation. We have C1, we have C2, we have C3 and this is removed and we have C4. So we start applying the resolution rule. We can combine C4 and C2 and by substituting S by A, X by A, we get not of GA. With this one, we apply this result with C1 and here again we replace x by a, we get not of dA. And this one with C3 which is already dA, we get false. So we see 
that in predicate logic the resolution refutation method is working in the following way it does the following steps and the steps are one convert to clausal form we define how the six steps will convert it to clausal form the second but before the six steps we do f1 and f2 and so on and so forth and not of g and then we apply the resolution rule and in this resolution rule we need to do substitution and unification and we need to use the most general unifier and we repeatedly apply the resolution rule to prove unsatisfiability as we mentioned in the previous class first order predicate calculus and this resolution rule is semi decidable in in the sense that if the set of clauses are unsatisfiable this will terminate in finite number of steps and prove it to be unsatisfiable however if it is not unsatisfiable that means it is satisfiable then the algorithm may terminate or may not terminate because as we have seen in the paradox this is an undecidable problem this is semi decidable so in this lecture we have discussed the very world famous resolution refutation mechanism which is a very simplified single step algorithm using only one rule called the resolution